No matter your age, your plan for retirement can start today. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Retirement Report. Good morning. Welcome to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. Going to share some articles I've been running through in this past week that are kind of interesting and I think will be of some value to you. You know, we're starting off the new year. This is a time, it's a great time, in fact, for planning. We've talked about tax planning uh, over the last couple of weeks. We talked about uh, investing prior to that. The stock market's been on, on quite a run and tickling with the 20,000 uh, limit on the Dow. But what is, what is it really looking like as far as the future? We still have a number of issues, in fact, that we're going to talk about uh, that are, are going to potentially, there's still negatives out there, if you will, that could uh, present headwinds with regard to growth. Uh, in, in your stock portfolio. So when it comes to saving for retirement, some of the things I'm going to talk about, there are 18 scary retirement statistics in one article I ran across, five, uh, navigating five critical retirement risks in another. Uh, the next 10 years, we've talked about uh, what rates of return to expect from your portfolio. Has that really changed now with a new administration with some of the policies that are being floated that could help with regard to business and jobs and, and the economy uh, as a result of that? We're going to talk about health care a little bit because this is another area when it comes into one of the big risks in retirement. Health care costs are one of those, and it's one of the scary statistics, in fact, uh, that a lot of people are facing. We've I've done the whole shows, in fact, talking about health care costs alone, because when you reach age 65 and you qualify for Medicare, you still have a lot of costs that go along with that. All right, if you've got uh, original Medicare with Part A, Part B, and Part D, let's say if you've got the prescription part, then you know you've got deductibles and coinsurance, and you're going to need a Medicare supplement plan. It's also going to have a cost, uh, a premium cost attached to it. When you add up your, all the out-of-pocket costs, uh, depending on the statistics that you look at, for a couple, you're looking at potentially over $200,000 an individual, uh, over $100,000 in out-of-pocket health care costs after what would be covered by Medicare. Uh, we've talked about Medicare Advantage plans as maybe one way to hedge against this and, and some of the trade-offs there. So I'm going to get into some of these statistics, but I want to share with you as a part of that some of the things I've talked about on this show before, and there's an interesting uh, article that was that I came across, a newsletter I should say, and it talks about some of the different things, these risks, and it just gives a quick little list. So one of them is the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. We've talked about that before. What impact might that have on the uh, stock market? And we saw what happened at the end of uh, 2015 and he, when the Fed raised the rates by a quarter percent and what it did to the stock market. This year, when they raised it a quarter percent, it seemed to have little, if any, effect. And, and, we, tr and, and we, we went right through that period. Now, the question is, will that continue as the new year goes on in 2017 and the Fed wants to normalize rates and continue to raise the interest rates, what impact might that have on the stock market? Will the growth policies imp uh, being proposed by the new administration, will they in fact be enough to offset and allow us to normalize rates with little pain, hopefully, in other words, not uh, throw us into a recession in the process? And by that not by the policies, but by the raising and normalizing of the rates, the, the basically trying to draw back uh, the, the quantitative easing that we've had. Next is earnings. 478, this was an interesting statistic, 478 of the S&P 500 companies, all right? So think of that, almost all of them, okay? Uh, about 95% of the S&P 500 com companies use what is called non-GAAP accounting, and this is generally accepted uh, accounting principles, to report earnings. So the SEC will soon be requiring these companies to, in fact, use these general uh, accounting or accepted accounting principles to report their earnings. So what they're looking at there, that this will probably reduce any company's earnings, and there are estimates saying that by as much as 30 to 80 percent, if we start, in other words, if the 
numbers that we're seeing were uh, following, were actually accounted for under general accepted accounting principles, then the numbers may not look as good as what is being reported. So what do you think that might do with regard to stock prices? Okay, something to keep in mind. And we've talked a lot about stock prices, and I've, get, I've cited many uh, resources, such as some quotes like from uh, John Bogle, the founder of Vanguard Fund, saying that anticipated returns in the U.S. market being about 4% over the next 10 years. Talked about people like, well, BlackRock, the largest money manager in the world, with a similar prediction of about 4% growth over the next, in, in stock prices over the next, uh, uh, stock returns rather, over the next 10 years. The next was McKinsey, which is an international company, or does international research, research company. And McKinsey and Company, uh, their historical returns, they looked at, and I'd shared this with you before, you may recall, on a prior program. This had to do with returns to expect. Now there's a reason I get into this because one of the things when it comes to what your, how your planning works, you've got to look at what you're, where you're starting from. What do you have currently, for instance, as we've talked about, right? What is your income? What are your expenses, your monthly living expenses? That's your financial lifestyle, right? What is that? We've got to measure that. Assets. What do you have for assets currently? Do you have money saved up? Hopefully a good amount in your 401ks, IRAs, 403b, whatever type of retirement accounts or even non-retirement accounts. Do you have a good emergency fund, a short-term fund? Uh, what do you have for liabilities? Do you have debt? And if so, how much and what kind of interest rates are you paying? And do you have a plan to get rid of that debt? All of these are especially important as you near retirement. But they're important in general. I mean, if you can, if the earlier you attack these things, the better and easier your retirement is going to be to save for retirement and to have and be able to maintain that lifestyle that you currently have and improve upon it, all right, and have that quality of life that you desire. So one of the things that McKinsey talks about, again, even globally, is returns of about 4% a year. And it goes into a lot in the research that, that shows why uh, they're coming up with this, okay, or how they're, they're arriving at these numbers. So when you see that kind of consensus, now most all these numbers in these studies were prior to the election. Will the election really have that much of an impact? Will the policies that we're going to see over the next year, 12 months to, to next 12 to 24 months, we'll say, are going to be critical in terms of what impact that may have as far as our economy goes and what that may mean with regard to the stock market. The most important thing to take away is understanding your own portfolio, your own savings plan, and what you're doing. The, I'm going to tell you one of the biggest secrets, the, if, if you will, or biggest tips, we'll say, that I have found in working with clients for over this 26 plus years is that when, when uh, clients, the, the most successful clients are the ones that are good savers. They have found a way, no matter what they're, some with very modest means, to be able to save more money, in other words, live on less than what they make, to make sure that they were always, every month, putting a little money aside. Okay, these are the most successful people. The next part when it comes to getting that money to work with you, for you, I should say, is, is the next part of that is how to make sure that you can get your money working for you so that you get even more benefit from it, compounding the uh, savings by the returns that you make. The next part then, when we get into planning, is we look at, well, what is the needed rate of return? How much money do you have to make on your money? You've heard me talk about this before. When I ask people many times, you know, how much money do you want to, you know, how much would you like to earn on your money? What kind of return? And most people say, well, as much as I can, okay? But then we say, well, what if you lost half of your money or all of your money next year? You know, uh, what would that be? You know, no, no, I don't want to lose any money, okay? Or I want to minimize that, that impact. So that's where we start determining what kind of portfolio. This is a risk tolerance, in other words, type of quiz, right? We want to determine, well, we want to make as much as we can, but we also want to minimize our risk and the volatility in our portfolio uh, in the process. And the closer you get to retirement, the closer you get to where you start taking money out of those retirement accounts, the more important it is to minimize volatility and be more conservative. But there are ways that you can still get the return you need and have the income you need in retirement 
and manage that volatility while still getting enough return to be able to again maintain your lifestyle and your quality of life no matter how long you live. So those are the these are the, this is always the goal when we start with this is we want to make sure that you can attain and maintain your quality of life, your lifestyle uh, quality of life for as long as you live, for you, for your family, attain your financial goals. That's the way I approach planning. All right, And then I look at it, well, what needed rate of return do I need to make on your money to be able to do that? And what's the safest way to get there? All right, Because that's going to give us the even more uh, probability of success if we can minimize risks in the process. All right, So we're going to get into a lot today about some of the concerns that are out there and ways that you can protect yourself while still attaining your goals and, and, may, and being able to, again, attain and maintain your lifestyle and quality of life. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I'm going to delve into what we're calling this, this article that I think you're going to get a lot of interest. This is going to be very helpful for you. It's called 18 Scary Retirement Statistics. So if you'd like to know what those are and some strategies to protect yourself, stay with us because we're going to be right back here on The Retirement Report. Mm -hmm. 